everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar titled Don't Miss a Beat, Arrhythmia Detection for Preclinical ECG Research. This is Andy Henton from Inside Scientific, and I'll be your host for today's event. Our session is sponsored by Data Sciences International and will focus on arrhythmia detection in preclinical research applications, including common challenges and how scientists can improve their data analysis process through the application of Data Insights software. By way of case study, our presenters will share their experiences using Data Insights software, specifically referencing how they have leveraged data location, classification, and reporting functions to improve their analysis process. First, we will hear from Dr. Bilal A. Mohammed from George August University in Göttingen, Germany. He will discuss how arrhythmia scoring correlates with a stage of myocardial remodeling in a mouse model of transaortic constriction-induced heart failure. Second, we will be joined by Hank Holsgraf, a safety pharmacology consultant at Charles River Laboratories. Hank will present his research on dose-dependent polymorphic arrhythmia detection in dogs, specifically on large data sets with time and dose-dependent proarrhythmic effects using Wabane. Hello, everybody. First of all, I would like to, uh, to thank uh, DSI for uh, inviting me to participate in this webinar. Thank you very much, Andy and Hank. Uh, the topic of my study is uh, the arrhythmia and its correlation to the stage of myocardial remodeling occur in uh, mice exposed to pressure overload induced heart failure. So in our study, we use a uh, well-established mouse model of induced heart failure, termed transaortic constriction, which produce an effect similar to uh, aortic stenosis seen in human. And for the people who are not uh, quite familiar with this technique, I just will uh, explain it in a few words. So transaortic constriction imply an induction of aortic narrowing at the transverse aorta between the left between the left and uh, right carotid artery. So uh, this will create a back pressure exerting on the left ventricle, which leads to cardiac remodeling. And the cardiac remodeling occur in two stages. So uh, compensated hypertrophy stage occurring immediately or uh, during the acute phase after induction of this uh, constriction in which the heart is increasing in size or hypertrophied but the function is maintained. While in heart failure stage occurring in chronic stage after induction of constriction, the um, heart increase in size but the, the function is massively deteriorated. So in our study we use this two time point compensate hypertrophy stage and heart failure stage. So the aim is to address whether the, there is a difference in a pattern or the severity of ventricular arrhythmia in these two stages. So um, the mice were uh, operated by tech and followed up by serial echocardiography every week. And uh, as I mentioned, in com compensate hypertrophy stage, we selected two week post tech. And in heart failure stage, we selected nine week post tech. So by echo data, uh, confirm our um, assumption that in uh, both in co uh, compensate hypertrophy and heart failure stage, uh, there is a massive increase in heart and left ventricle in diastolic diameter, indicating an increase in uh, hi or hypertrophy of the heart. Uh, but the function of the heart demonstrated by ejection fraction is only deteriorated in heart failure while it's maintained in compensate hypertrophy. Again, the morphometric study confirmed our assumption. So the heart weight tibial length increased in both stage, compensated hypertrophy and heart failure stage, but massively increased in heart failure compared to compensated hypertrophy. Lung weight tibial length ratio also um, representing the lung congestion is massively increased in heart failure compared to shape. So histological study also uh, uh, was done. And uh, as we see here, it's uh, as the heart increasing in size, also the cardiomyocyte increasing in diameter in both compensate hypertrophy and heart failure stage. Also molecular study was done uh, using the marker NBBB, uh, which shown, showed the increase in both compensate hypertrophy and heart failure stage. But in heart failure stage, it's massively increased compared to compensate hypertrophy. So we follow up the mortality in, uh, of these mice in TAC and CHAM, so we can uh, we de detect an, a massive or uh, significant uh, de increase in the mortality in TAC operated mice compared to CHAM. So the question now is, is this increased mortality could be due to uh, or uh, is due to uh, reduced function of the heart or increased arrhythmia or both of them. So in the previous slide we showed that uh, the function of the heart is deteriorated after TAC, so what about arrhythmia now? So for this, we we uh, uh, we 
perform our arrhythmia study, but before going through arrhythmia study, we, I would like to to explain very short the what's known as excitation contraction coupling. So excitation contraction coupling normally occur, which is responsible for the uh, uh, transformation of the excitation wave to perform uh, cardiomyocyte contraction and start with action potential propagating through the cell membrane to activate uh, L-type calcium channel, which allow calcium entry from extracellular to the intracellular space. And this calcium entry uh, will uh, activate ryanidine receptor, leading to release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, what's known as calcium-induced calcium release. This massive increase in calcium intracytoplasmic will bind to troponin in the muscle fiber, which will create muscle contraction. So to uh, to uh, to um, to induce uh, relaxation, so the calcium will be uh, released from the troponin C via bumping by a circa to back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or by mainly to by NCX to be bumped outside the cell in exchange with sodium. So this is physiological. So what's what happened uh, in, for example, in heart failure, in a pathological stage like heart failure or myocardial remodeling, so the calcium, the sensitivity of ryanodine receptor will, with, will increase according to the Andrew Mark theory in heart failure, so allowing calcium release from sarcoplasmic to the uh, intracytoplasmic, uh, intras, intracytoplasmic uh, uh, portion, not only during systole but also during diastole, which is known as calcium leak. So what's the consequence of calcium leak in the cardiomyocyte? So as I mentioned, the calcium will be released not only in systole but also in diastole. So the calcium will be released and this calcium intracytoplasmic should be or must be re re removed from, from the intracytoplasmic. So it will be uh, in exchange with sodium by NCX will be bumped out but the sodium entry will create delayed after depolarization which will lead to arrhythmia induction. So uh, the leak is uh, uh, responsible for the uh, induction of arrhythmia. So to figure out what, if, it is, if, this, if this is the case in our uh, study, so we uh, compare the SR calcium spark, which uh, represent uh, SR calcium leak in sham and tag, and we found by confocal uh, scanning microscopy and mild increase in spark existing of spark in, uh, to, to less extent in sham, but massively increased in tech. So we follow up the, the parameter of the, of the spark, uh, meaning frequency, amplitude, duration, uh, and the width. And we could see that only the spark frequency is increased, while the amplitude and uh, duration and width is not affected in tech compared to sham. So overall, the relative SR calcium leak, which multiplication of all these four parameters, give more or less similar results like uh, an, uh, frequency. So increasing relative SR calcium leak in tech compared to sham. Since many report, uh, uh, reported that uh, the, the leak not only occur via calcium spark, but also calcium spark independent, so we used a protocol to measure the overall SR calcium leak developed uh, in the lab of the Andrew, uh, of the Donald pair. So we could have the same result in compensate hypertrophy and in heart failure stage, the leak is increased compared to sham. But in heart failure stage, is is more exaggerated compared to compensate hypertrophy stage. So uh, also when we compare, uh, when we, uh, the ratio of a leak to SR calcium content, we got the same result. So uh, from this, we can see that um, in tech, the leak is increased. So what will be the consequence of the increased leak in our arrhythmia study? So to see this, we, we, uh, we use the ECG telemetry from DSI. And as we see, it's a two electrode, positive electrode. Uh, the, tel the telemetry is implanted intraperitoneal in sedated in, in anesthetized mice with positive electrode uh, implanted uh, in the upper left abdomen, while the negative electrode implanted in the upper right chest. So in the beginning, we found uh, we we could detect. Uh, uh, mostly all type of arrhythmia, so sinus rhythm, BVCs, 
by Jimny Salvo non-steroid, uh, non-sustained ventricular tachycardia and sustained ventricular tachycardia, as well as torsad to point, which is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, to our study. So we used uh, telemetry implantation. One week after the implantation, we uh, perform a TAC. Two week after, at the two week and nine week post TAC at our two time point, we uh, start with detection of arrhythmia. So in sham, uh, most of the case it was uh, sinus rhythm, while in compensated hypertrophy, uh, some uh, extra stool, single extra stool or uh, pygemony, trigemony, some uh, not not. Uh, um, not, for example, ventricular, not so many uh, ventricular tachycardia. While in heart failure, uh, we have uh, an increase in the number of ventricular tachycardia as well as uh, polymorphic. And this is very interesting This because it could explain the, why uh, the mortality is increased in TAC because of the increase the ventricular tachycardia issue. So we start with counting these events. So PVCs for 24 hours is increasing in both compensated hypertrophy and heart failure, but in heart failure is massive, massive increase compared to the compensated hypertrophy. Also, a uh, number of ventricular tachycardia shows the same pattern. The induction, the rate, so in, in sham, uh, um, the no mice uh, exhibited the ventricular tachycardia, while in uh, compensated hypertrophy, around 40% of the mice, while in heart failure uh, mice, is a heart failure stage the mice exhibited 100% of the mice exhibited heart uh, ventricular tachycardia. Overall, we used an arrhythmia score to 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 um, to give a, 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 an indication of the of the arrhythmia, the pattern or the, the severity of arrhythmia in the two stage compensated hypertrophy and heart failure using uh, the arrhythmia where it is uh, where no BVCs is represented by uh, zero or single BVCs one. By Gemini or Salvo, two non-sustained, three sustained ventricular tachycardia, four, and we could see that the uh, arrhythmia score is massive increased, massive increase in heart failure compared to compensated hypertrophy stage, which is go with the the pattern of uh, a leak, which is also increased in heart failure massively compared to uh, compensated hypertrophy stage. Consistently, we used programmed electrical stimulation for the Langendorf perfused heart, and we could find the same finding, uh, meaning that the uh, inducibility of arrhythmia is in compensated hypertrophy is increasing massively compared to sham, while it is in heart failure is more increased than that in compensated hypertrophy stage. So to sum up, so the, 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 the elevated SR calcium leak in myocardial remodeling increased the arrhythmia vulnerability and SR calcium leak induced arrhythmia beside bump failure are responsible for increased mortality after attack. Arrhythmia severity correlate well with the severity of myocardial remodeling in which myocardial remodeling stage in uh, compensated hypertrophy stage, mostly uh, single BVCs, while in uh, heart failure stage uh, we could see many ventricular tachycardia. What's the translational outlook of this study? So now we, uh, there is many uh, available drug to inhibit the SR calcium leak, and uh, via, the, via the plan of this study, we can um, test the effect of this drug, uh, which will be a promising target to improve survival in patients with heart failure by reducing lethal arrhythmia. With this, I would like to, uh, to finish my presentation. I'd like to thank all the audience for the attention, and thank you very uh, thank you, Andy. Uh, good morning, good evening to all. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to participate in this webinar. Today, I will summarize our initial experiences with a uh, new DSI software product, Data Insights, uh, for the continuous assessment of the proarrhythmic effects of Wabane in the telemeter dog. Uh, Data Insights, for those who may or may not be familiar with it, it's a new add-on to the familiar Panema data acquisition package, which enables, for the uh, to our knowledge, uh, the, the first true quantitative assessment of arrhythmia variance during continuous data acquisition. The initial release was extensively validated using isolated arrhythmic waveform snippets, which are summarized on the following slides. 
the initial validation was from 41 hand-scored snippets that were evaluated in parallel by a cardiologist overread and by data insights and the various uh, arrhythmia, arrhythmia variants and the numbers uh, detected by the two methods are summarized in the right panel. They are all absolutely identical with one discrepancy and that would be in premature atrial contractions where the cardiologist detected 11, data insights detected 8, and as most of you know, uh, especially in dog, this is a uh, where um, respiratory sinus arrhythmia is frequent and a normal variant, uh, the, this can be considered uh, just normal background. The three species that were evaluated were dog, cinemologus, and mini pig. Now, when Data Insights is opened up, there are a number of predefined searches. I'm not going through all of them, but you get a menu similar to what is seen on the right-hand panel. And these are divided into several subsections. First, there is an analysis window, which presents uh, scoring of the percent matches using template analysis within uh, Panema. Then there is a section uh, that describes the various arrhythmias that are that can be selected from the menu and then there's a uh, data validation section where you can look for uh, continuity of data coverage which also is very important especially in large continuous acquisitions the current arrhythmias that were searched for were AV blocks junctional beats premature atrial contractions and ventricular escape uh, ventricular escape beats and ventricular ectopics, uh, then further subdivided into couplets, triplets, runs, bigeminy, and trigeminy. There are a number of other arrhythmias listed in the panel that we that, that simply could not be run. There has to be a pre-selected uh, panel to drive the protocol. Of note, and this will be described in more detail in subsequent slides, any of these existing searches may be custom edited and new searches created as may be needed for a given experimental condition or species. So to the experiment, uh, prorhythmic liability, everyone realizes, remains a major cardiovascular risk. There is increased focus on this now, particularly with the um, uh, impending uh, development of SIPA, which will concentrate on in vitro and in silico analysis. Um, continuous prorhythmic analysis of large in vivo data sets, however, will require automated technology. And as I previously noted, Data Insights is currently validated only with small data snippets. So what we wanted to do was to characterize Data Insights in large data sets where there was reliable time and dose dependent prorhythmic effects using a known reference agent. So the experimental design is straightforward. We use five telemetered adult beagle dogs under isofluorane anesthesia. This is important. I'll get to this in a moment. Uh, and the reference agent was Wabane. Uh, administered as a 20 microgram per kilogram IV bolus and then followed by a continuous infusion of the five subjects. One subject received twice the nominal dose, but that will not be covered in this particular presentation. Uh, in, infusion was uh, terminated at arrhythmia onset. And using Wabane in this uh, anesthetized model, ACTB approaches about 100% and this is primarily due to DADs related to abnormal calcium homeostasis. This has been well documented by Hamlin et al. Uh, in, a, in a very recent publication, and that's what we use to uh, base our model on. Uh, throughout the Wabane administration, TK samples were taken up through three hours post-dose. Uh, for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to restrict the data to the most complex subject and use that animal as an exemplar and it's simply designated as 1504. So the methods, telemeter data, uh, standard techniques, digitized at 500 hertz. The primary ECG and blood pressure analysis was performed with Panema 5.2 Service Pack 7. Arrhythmia analysis was with Data Insights. 
all of the fiduciary ECG marks were now, um, performed with Panema pattern recognition. And as I alluded to earlier, we employed a subset of pre-specified searches to capture specifically atrial and ventricular conduction effects. Uh, these included PACs, second degree AV block, junctional and ectopic beats. And at the end, there's also uh, a presentation of PD, PD cor PKPD correlations. So the steady results. First, the Wabane pharmacokinetics. Uh, on the left y-axis is the Wabane plasma concentration in nanograms per mil versus the uh, infused dose in micrograms per kilogram. And you can appreciate that it's generally linear, but with five and samples are given as specified in the right panel uh, performed where feasible. Um, so there was a tightly correlated time and dose dependent exposure in all subjects. However, there was between subject variability, uh, which accounts for the scatter in the, in the summary graph. Um, it's worth noting that the exposures that are presented in this graph and the exposures that were achieved in this experiment are only possible in the anesthetized dog via IV administration, and that's because oral administration would result in intractable emesis and is an unethical and impossible experiment to perform. So to the first data, the hemodynamic effects, summarized in the left panel, um, uh, systemic pressures, systolic and diastolic, shown in red and blue uh, on the left y-axis, and the Wabane concentration in green, uh, shown in nanograms per mil on the right y-axis. Um, as you probably all know, Wabane is a well-documented cardiac glycoside. It inhibits sodium potassium ATPase and then affects uh, intracellular calcium. The increase in, in, in intracellular calcium is further increased for the, via the sodium calcium exchanger. So you end up with the with a positive inotrope, and yet this elicits dose dependent increases in systemic pressure, which are clearly illustrated in the panel. As soon as the bolus is initiated at one hour. Uh, systemic pressures start to increase and they remain elevated for the duration of the experiment. I have two slides presenting the uh, predicate uh, ECG intervals. First, RR and PR. The RR interval is pr presented uh, in milliseconds on the left axis and the PR interval in milliseconds on the right axis. And we'll overlay the Wabane uh, concentration in green and you can readily appreciate that PR and RR intervals are quite stable during the uh, pre-dose phase. And then upon administration of Wabane, uh, there is a slowing in the RR interval and a pronounced increase in the PR interval um, in excess of 200 milliseconds. So while there's an exposure dependent increase in RR, there's obviously an inotropic component that has some reflex slowing on heart rate, but in this particular design, that actual contribution can't be sorted out. We, however, feel that the um, in, uh, that the decrease in heart rate, the increase in RR, exceeds what would be a phys physiologically uh, a physiologic reflex response. The exposure dependent increase in PR uh, also is associated with RR prolongation. But again, when the PR exceeds 200 milliseconds, we feel that this exceeds the RR effect. And as will be described in some subsequent slides, uh, when we searched for PACs and second degree AV blocks, these correlated quite nicely with the PR prolongation and the uh, increase in Wabane uh, concentration. QRS and QTCV are presented in this panel, QRS on the left axis and QTCV on the right axis. And again, you can appreciate the QRS shown in blue uh, is absolutely stable until three hours into the experiment, at which point with the higher concentrations, it rapidly uh, 
widens up to almost 100 milliseconds. QT and the Wabane doses there is overlaid in green. So the time and dose dependent increase in the QRS interval was associated with the expected increase in ventricular activity. The QTV, QTCV shortening is also an expected effect that's consistent with the in vitro APD shortening that has been shown in numerous uh, in vitro experiments and is just presented here for information. So the last several slides of this presentation will deal with the data insights output screen. This is a fairly complex screen and on the first exemplar I'm going to just orient you to the information that's, that's available. Uh, first in the sec upper center screen is a list of the selected searches that are available. In this particular case, PACs have been selected and the actual algorithm that is applied to the data to calculate and identify these beats is always verbosely presented in the, in the upper right panel and this can be edited as needed. Uh, back to the results, in this particular search, 33 PACs were identified and an example waveform uh, from the raw data is presented in this window and the PAC can be readily appreciated. Uh, the components that went into the definition of this waveform and are specified in the formula in the upper right are actually numerically presented in this table. And then what I find to be most helpful, there is a histogram presented for the entire experimental observation period showing the incidence of these various uh, arrhythmic events. So that's the orientation and that will be the same for the remaining slides. So to the more interesting data, first second degree AV block. Uh, highlighted in the upper left. Uh, there were 183 second degree AV blocks uh, detected by Data Insights. These are shown in the uh, waveform screen, uh, an exemplar. And the way Data Insights is currently implemented, the conducted P wave does not have the typical validation marks around it. You'll note that those are absent in this particular P wave. What is marked are the uh, P start, P end for the non-conducted P wave, the second degree block. And if you'll recall, upon Wabane infusion, we had a massive increase in PR prolongation, so obviously an effect on AV conduction. And not surprisingly, the second degree AV blocks uh, centered on this particular um, uh, effect and correlated quite well with the infusion of Wabane. To ventricular ectopy, which is the expected outcome of Wabane infusion, again uh, in the upper left uh, the results of the search and here ventricular ectopics uh, uncategorized are summarized and 4,353 isolated waveforms were detected. Exemplars are presented here. And to the histogram, which I found most interesting, if you'll recall, QRS started to widen uh, rather dramatically, going from 50 milliseconds to over up to about 100 milliseconds. And the occurrence of ventricular ectopy corresponds precisely with this increase in QRS. So again, an expected outcome, but a very nice PKPD presentation. Uh, the, there are a few remaining examples of, sub, of the ability to subcategorize arrhythmia variants. Um, the first will be ventricular triplets. These are described in, again in the upper left panel. 95 triplets were isolated. Uh, these are a, a snippet is shown in the waveform window. Um, clearly ventricular triplets. Where were they? The triplets all, there were only 95, but they existed exactly where you would expect, which is in that large population of ventricular ectopy. And we had mentioned earlier that 
there are profound effects on AV conduction. Um, so it seemed reasonable to search for ventricular escape beats and localize them with respect to time. So when the ventricular escape search was applied, 596 um, isolates were detected and a, a, a representative example is presented here. Clearly, this is an escape beat, very long pause. And what I found interesting, again, was that the ventricular escape beats are found exactly where you would expect them, which is where the effects of Wabane were most profound. And the last example is a ventricular run. Uh, 212 incidences were isolated. Uh, the exemplar waveform is presented here. And again, no surprise, ventricular runs were uh, found within the larger subpopulation of, uh, or full population of ventricular ectopic beats. So in summary, uh, using data insights, we had very robust time and dose-dependent arrhythmia detection. It's worth noting that the complicated effects of Wabane on AV conduction limited some of the investigation of complex variants. Um, it certainly enables robust PKPD modeling of arrhythmia incidents, which adds high confidence to a uh, to the presence or absence of a drug effect. It's certainly consistent with pending SIPA objectives, but I found this to be an unexpected surprise. I don't have the data to present to you right now, but Wabane in the typical SIPA ion channel screen is quite clean. Uh, at the doses tested, it has no specific ion channel inhibitory effects. All of the uh, effects were due to uh, sodium potassium ATPase and the sodium calcium exchanger. So it does raise, it, it does provide an example uh, where ion channel assays fail to predict potentially or actually very important in vivo arrhythmias. So in the end, we feel that it certainly was a cost and time effective method for rapid semi-automated arrhythmia analysis and early drug development. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we're now going to turn control back over to Andy, I believe, for the Q&A session. So again, thank you very much. Thank you uh, for your very informative presentation, Hank. That was great. And uh, yes, we've had a number of questions uh, come in over the past um, uh, 40 minutes or so. So let's uh, get right to it. Um, before we do start, though, I'd like to bring on Anil uh, Mahendele, Senior Principal Engineer at Data Science International, who will uh, help address some of the questions that have come in today. Um, so Anil, do we have you with us? Hello, Andy. I'm online. Perfect. We hear you loud and clear. Thanks for joining us today. All right, well, actually, I'm going to um, start with you, Bilal. Um, a question that basically has come in, uh, can you comment on how the Data Insight software improved or really enabled um, you to generate the research that you shared today? Yeah, I would say it's in our study, uh, in our arrhythmia study, we used, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, telemetry. Uh, so the telemetry was from Data Insight. And the telemetry gave us a great opportunity to carry out our uh, study without, with minimal complications. So it's increasing the compliance. So minimal intervention is required. You just have to um, to implant the telemetry, and that's it. So you and then you can continue measure uh, measuring the arrhythmia for 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 whatever you whenever you want. So the more also the data we got from the telemetry implantation is more physiological. So you don't have to inject ISO, which is total pathological. You don't have to handle the mice if from each time you uh, you want to measure uh, the the or to, to detect the arrhythmia. Also the full disclosure uh, before or exhibited by the telemetry to 24 hour uh, measurement uh, is can be easily uh, done. And also, uh, not only the ECG, but also it gave a, 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 a data regarding the temperature of the mice and the activity of the mice. Not only the detection of the arrhythmia or detection of the measurement of, uh, of uh, the ECG uh, traces, but also the analysis, which is one of the 
obstacle in this in the field of arrhythmia how to analyze the huge data obtained from 24 hour uh, measurement of mice so we know that the mice is uh, in contrast to human has a very high uh, rate of heart uh, bump more 500 or 600 beats per minute so uh, think about uh, 24 hour measurement so it you you, you will need uh, 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 so long time to analyze this data by and uh, we, t we in the beginning we try to contact um, a mathematician in the Max Planck to uh, to uh, provide us with an algorithm to to to, to analyze it uh, not manually but uh, I would say semi automated or automated but he, uh, during that time we was lucky enough to get this uh, Bonima software produced by DSI and uh, so the make it the this, this, this software make it very easy so i would just and give a short example so we used to analyze 24 hour data it took for each mouse around 8 hour doing nothing except uh, analyzing the data from this from this mouse but i've been using the bonima software it, i would say it's taking us 5 to 10 minutes for each mouse so this is a, a huge reduction of time and that is very easy to use and so time saving and I would say it's great the, it's mainly Punima software is it make it makes the things very easy perfect no that's a very complete answer I'm sure that addresses the question thank you very much um, okay uh, Next question, does data insights only work with ECG signals? And I'm going to ask perhaps you uh, take this one in nil. Uh, sure. The, the inputs that are used in constructing searches are the derived parameters that are calculated by any of Ponema's analysis modules. So as a result, data insights can work with all signal types acquired by Ponema. In addition, a search can incorporate parameters from different channels in the same subject and the, the only instance where ECG signals are treated differently is when Data Insights uses information from ECG Pro or the morphology of which takes into account the morphology of a waveform for pattern matching and that only works with ECG signals but otherwise it can work with with all of Ponema signals. Excellent, okay great. Um, Next question, uh, perhaps I'll uh, have uh, you, Hank, take this one. Uh, were there any arrhythmias you were not able to identify uh, using data insights? Well, there are two parts to that, uh, to that answer. Uh, in the presentation, I highlighted that there's a large library of predefined searches. However, it's not all inclusive. And Wabane produced some effects that we did not anticipate. Um, it created a, uh, a substrate where there was profound, uh, where there were profound AV conduction effects uh, in on a background of ventricular ectopy. So the predefined searches for first and second degree AV block uh, were present. First degree AV block is obviously very easy to find. That's just PR prolongation. And I showed an example of second degree AV block, which also can be uh, accurately adjudicated. Uh, AV dissociation or third degree AV block is much more complex because the P waves can be just any about anywhere. So I want to turn this over to Anil to describe this. When we encountered this, and this is why you do validation studies, um, this was a search that I felt would add value, so I put it to Anil to see um, what Data Insights could do. So with that background, Neil, Anil, um, you came up with a workable solution, which uh, perhaps you could describe to the audience. Sure, Hank. Um, so when, when searching for a third, for third degree AV block with Data Insights, we constructed the search which looked for marked PR changes over a sequence of cycles, and we didn't. We don't have a default search included in in the current version because we didn't have it fully qualified at the time of release. But we did try. We did try looking for um, third degree AV blocks on the data that Hank has, and it was effective in identifying the regions that. That, that showed AV block. 
there'll be further qualification on other data sets before we before we make it available as as a product or as an inclusion for our existing searches. Okay. Very good. Very good uh, complete answer. Um, we've had some questions come in about uh, combining blood pressure recordings along with this type of uh, arrhythmia analysis and I was hoping um, well again everybody on our panel today could perhaps comment either one have they done that uh, simultaneous pressure measurements uh, from the animal subjects and then would there be anything unique uh, as it relates to analyzing this these results and combining the pressure data or frankly maybe even other um, uh, physiological measurements that might be recorded um, uh, with the arrhythmia detection software a very short answer and then ask Neil perhaps to embellish it uh, I, I've certainly looked at uh, combined blood pressure ECG signals and the co, uh, co-plotting, co-presenting uh, the blood pressure signal uh, certainly helps in adjudicating uh, conducted and non-conducted beats. And in the study that I just described, where DADs and EADs are the predominant arrhythmia forms, uh, that can be quite useful. Uh, and again, in this situation of AB blocks, uh, d d is, is a beat conducted or not conducted? Uh, Neil, could you uh, tell us uh, that? Certainly, I mean, being able to, when when working through and looking for either arrhythmias or other anomalies in the data, it does help to be able to run a search that includes some interrogation of what the blood pressure what the blood pressure is doing at the same time. Um, in addition, I mean, a simple a search as simple as looking for instances where your heart rate results are different <coughs> from ECG and from blood pressure. It's enough to say, well, what's going on? And what Data Insights does is it lets you quickly visualize the, the region that has caused that and lets you deal with it in terms of either accepting it or rejecting the data uh, so that it's not included in the analysis. Okay. Very good. Um, a question again for our panel um, in your opinion how how easy was it to implement the data insight software basically moving your data from in both cases Ponema into the data insights analysis program and would you, what's the learning curve that can you comment on that and share your experience with the audience so Bilal actually I'll ask you to um, share your experience first and then Hank maybe you can follow up I didn't have any problem with transferring the data to the data insight. In my case, I, I would say it's uh, we don't have to to worry about this. I I didn't have any problem with this. Very good. And Hank. And I I would echo those comments because data insights is just a uh, menu addition to the familiar Panema user interface. So uh, the integration and uh, and use of data insights was really basically seamless, uh, very, very quick learning curve, very, very quick implementation. Very good. Okay. And on the same tone, uh, just, oh, sure, yeah, no, go ahead. If I could add a quick point there, Andy. So Data Insights is available in a post-analysis mode in review. And as soon as, once you're, if you're familiar with Punima and review, once you've opened a data set in review, Data Insights is available as, as part of your review session and it's built to be an interactive, um, iterative process working with, with you while you're analyzing your data. Okay, perfect. And is it correct that then Data Insights as a module is attached uh, solely to Ponema acquisition and analysis or is this a product that can link to other uh, acquisition softwares? It is specific to the Punima, um, Punima platform. Perfect. Okay. Um, I guess actually on the same tone, we've had a question that came in from Bernard and um, who's asked, "How is Data Insights different from ECG Pro?" With, I'll, if I can take that. Yep. Um, Andy, ECG ECG Pro is our template matching product. And what that does is it allows the user to identify specific morphologies in an ECG signal. And ECG Pro 
will identify other cycles like it in a data set. Okay. With, with data insights, it can be used with ECG Pro, but it can also be used with, as we said earlier, any derived parameter. So this is where the user can construct a search based on derived parameters and find instances or data insights will 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 highlight instances where that search the search results are where the searches are satisfied. Now for using data insights with ECG Pro, we can identify, we can visualize quickly visualize the cycles that have matched either a specific template or a group of templates that were after running um, ECG Pro or template analysis. So the two are different but complementary. Okay, perfect. Well, that's a great answer. Um, okay, again, many questions have come in here, and I'm just going to request that um, we just have a second to filter through some. I'm going to pick some out. Um, a couple questions have, have come in about maybe just having people comment on their best practices or tips and tricks as it comes down to um, uh, how to handle data f uh, data sets that are coming in that are particularly noisy. If you have a noisy ECG signal, are there are there suggestions on how to maybe clean the data and would this be done prior to analysis by um, a data insights or is that maybe a feature that's built into data insights? Um, again, maybe Anil, you start this and and we can have our, our uh, Hank and Bilal comment to anything that they've done in their lab. Again, Hank in the large animal and maybe uh, Bilal obviously in, in rodents. Sure. There are there are noise um, elimination or noise suppression um, abilities built into, let's take ECG for example. However, that doesn't mean that all the noisy data is going to get caught by them. One of the, generally before you start analyzing in detail, it's nice to run some of the data validation searches which are, which are built-in searches in Data Insights and what those searches help highlight are um, cycles that or regions of the data that may be noisy. It could be valid data, it could be noisy data, but being able to quickly highlight them gives the user within the data insights window an opportunity to opportunity to select which is good and which is indeed noisy and then bad data marks can be placed down. That's 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 the term that we or the method we use within Punima to mark off data that should not be included in, in subsequent analysis. So there are searches that are are targeted towards the elimination of or interrogation of potentially noisy data. And I pass that on to either Hank or Bilal if they have any other, any further comments. Uh, I would say that uh, in the beginning you have to, uh, uh, the implementation of telemetry is uh, play an important role to get a better uh, ECG traces. This is the first, first, first and most important thing. Second, when you have a noisy ECG, uh, the Bunima software uh, allow us to, uh, to, to um, first of all, it trace the ECG, detect the, the arrhythmic uh, event itself, and then you have to trace it by naked eye, and then if you, uh, you can just simply uh, ignore the, 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 the event which is noisy, and uh, uh, take the, the event which is not or uh, better than uh, the noisy one, and it give the, this, um, this as a template to the software to detect only this event on the whole uh, ECG uh, um, traces. And by that you will not get rid of the noisy part of the ECG, but will ignore it. I mean, will uh, exclude this part and only focus on the part which is less noisy. Very good. Um, Hank, uh, your, your two cents? Uh, one thing to add that hasn't been covered, which uh, or, or specific directly, which is that when you employ data insights, even after noise filters and pattern recognition have been employed, um, the output of data insights is still interactive. When you get to the waveform screen that uh, I presented in, in, in my last several slides, you have the interactive ability to um, 
manually overread and reject cycles that are inappropriately uh, identified. Uh, there, so it's important to appreciate that Data Insights is not fully automated. This is not a turnkey black box where you input data and output an answer. I, I suppose that's possible, but the intention was that it be used in, a, in an interactive mode where the user has the ability to, to overread the data and, and, and reject cycles that are inappropriately identified. So that's sort of the, uh, the, uh, the last step in, in, in validating your output. Very good. Okay, that, yeah, that's great, uh, great input from everybody. Um, quick question, kind of actually outside of Data Insights, uh, does DSI provide implantable transmitters and hardware for conscious recording in rabbits where similar type of data that was printed today, presented today could be generated? And Neil, I'll ask you to answer this one. Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that, Andy? Yeah, so just does DSI provide the implantable transmitters and hardware that would be required for conscious recording in rabbits? Uh, yes, the DS, DSI transmitters are used in rabbits for conscious recording. Um, there are, we've had, we've processed rabbit data with data insights as well. And um, I think that's, that, that's very widely used, yes. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, and then, yes, the question from Christy I wanted to address was, um, can a researcher create their own arrhythmia algorithms and pattern recognition or adjust um, things if they feel that's necessary? What type of control does the user have? Um, I can take that, Andy. Sure. The, the, searches are, the searches are completely definable from, you can start from a blank slate and create your own search, <laughs> or you can take the existing default searches that are provided as, as starting points mm -hmm. and tweak them and modify them. So it's as long as what you're looking for is captured in one of Ponema's derived parameters or from an, in an ECG case captured in the morphology that is identified using ECG Pro, you can use it in a search and generate results from that. Perfect. Very good. Um, all right, I'm going to suggest that this be our final question and, and again I think it will be um, a good one to close on. Uh, the question is, uh, can, our, can our presenters comment on the foreseeable regulatory impact for quantitative arrhythmia scoring? And Hank, I'm going to ask that maybe you start off with this one. Okay. Um, thanks, Andy. The, as I noted, uh, reg the regulatory landscape is changing rather rapidly. We have the uh, development of the SIPA paradigm. And then for some of the listeners, uh, don't know if everyone is aware, but E14 was amended in December of 2015 uh, via Q&A. And uh, so this is going to cause some, um, lead to some fundamental changes, which ultimately uh, may provide exclusions for the need for a TQT study. Uh, there have been several publications uh, in, involving uh, clinical CROs and, and FDA uh, regulators where they've talked about the importance of exposure response modeling uh, in this uh, in new environment. And one thing that uh, I was particularly taken by is right now exposure response modeling, uh, which is accorded a uh, very high level of uh, reliability and importance really only has one surrogate variable, and that's the rate-corrected QTC. Um, with the advent of validated and reliable automated arrhythmia detection, I think we have a new response variable uh, that could be put into the uh, exposure response relationship, uh, generating very high confidence results in terms of uh, the presence or absence of prorhythmic liability. So I, I think that that uh, certainly will be in the future. Very interesting. And and are, are other speakers anything to add, Anil or Bilal? Um, one other comment I could make there is that uh, with 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 the use of data insights, it does allow users to go from 
uh, a snapshot type ECG analysis to analyzing much larger data sets and makes it feasible to analyze larger data sets and that is that that certainly does bring more more rigor to the uh, or more validity to the results if you will um, as opposed to just focusing on on selected time points through the through the data